So if you've been hanging out with us for a year, maybe a little bit more, then you'll recognize that this profile is belonging to the ODS 1775, which is basically the hottest thing to happen to the AK like ever. But that said, we have a full video series linked in the description box down below where you can see us running a 5,000 round test on this gun. Well, not specifically this gun, this model of firearm. This is a new production gun. But I know the people at Occam Defense as the upwards and onwards type people. And because of that, well, there's been some innovation in the space, so to speak. They are doing the Picatinny rear trunnion. And because of that, if you've tried to do anything remotely resembling manufacturing in the firearms industry in the last five years, you'll know that you pretty much can't get parts for anything. So they're like, you know what, screw it, we're gonna make our own. So they have a whole bunch of different accessories that they're doing as far as putting stuff on the end of the gun. Now this is their folder, but they also have a fixed triangle stock that would mount directly to the rear of your trunnion. No, of course, we're talking about an AK in this video, but really these accessories will mount to anything that's got a Picatinny rear on it. So we'll start with the folding mechanism on this thing. It's pretty stout. And if you look at how it works, it's a push up and fold, and then it has a detent that rolls over, basically. And you can see that there's some geometry right here on the back that allows that to happen. So it sticks. There's a fair amount of resistance there. After you get that tension in, it wants to roll over and, of course, self-latches. Now, if we go to the direct mount, again, Picatinny rail there on the back, we have it adhered with some Torx bit screws there on the back. Torx bit screws increase the surface area. So if it's something that really needs a wrench down, like a stock, and there is a relief cut there so that it can do a little bit of flexing and not compromise the metal. There won't be any plastic deformation or anything like that going on. Now, what I really like, not only are these lines that have been cut on this thing, but you can see there are one, two, three cutouts there. And those aren't just aesthetically pleasing. Those are dual-sided locking swivel stud mounts. And to round the stock out, of course, we have some serrations there on the back, grippage, right? Now, if we look at this thing, it's very straight, as in, and they're gonna hate me for this, kinda like the Magpul stock, as in it's a straight pullback, and I just cringed saying that myself. But if you look at what that does, compared to like a Warsaw stock or something like that, this gun, when I shoulder it, there is no fall away in the stock. Like a Warsaw stock or the RPK ones are really bad. Because it is Picatinny rail mounted, I have the option to raise and lower it depending on my cheek height. If you got a really fat face, you move it down. If you're like me and shoots more over the top of the rifle, then you want that thing as high as you can possibly get it. And having it not fall away is definitely a plus. That's for sure. Along those same ergonomic lines, the length of pull is kind of short, especially if we're talking about direct mount version because we basically get the thickness of the rail for this mechanism here at the back. And this is because the people at Occam Defense train. And because they train, they also wear body armor. And if you've tried to do the whole AK with body armor thing, eh, it can get in the way a little bit. It's not really, wasn't designed as far as a, like a Warsaw stock or something like that, or even the Magpul, which in my opinion is too long. They aren't really designed to be operated with body armor. This is shortened to accommodate that extra girth that you're gonna have, and it snaps right up there to, in my opinion, the correct length of pull for a modern weapon. Since I used the word modern, I suppose we might as well go for it. This is the Razor Strut, and this is exactly what you think it is. <laughs> this is kind of like a minimalist, roll your own, choose your own adventure type thing, and this one is set up with the tail hook. I believe it's the Mod 2, don't quote me on that, but the tail hook brace. But if you wanted to put a minimalist like blade on the end of it, if you're doing like an SBR or you just want to use this as a stock, then you can totally do that as well. If it fits that buffer tube dimension, then it's going to fit there on the end. It's got those lightning cuts, but inside those lightning cuts, we have those cutie swivel studs. And if we compare them to the aforementioned stock, that they are in the exact same positions. But again, it's one of those things that's more set up for modularity. There are some different lengths available. This is the 10 inch variant, which in my opinion is a little bit long for me. 
And if you're going to use this as a brace, depending on the gun that you're going to use it on, you got to be careful that 13 and a half inches type thing. This may put you over at the 10 inch level. You might want to go with one of the shorter ones, but if you're trying to use it as a stock, then who, who cares, right? In my opinion, it's a little bit long, especially if we do it in comparison to this. Like you can see that there's a little bit of length difference there on something like the Razor Strut. So me personally, I'd probably go with like an eight inch or something like that. Ooh, so I missed something. Sorry guys. And somebody was probably screaming at me about this who's a fanboy, but uh, that right there, that is new. And this is a Vortex Profile flash hider this was tested some years ago by the military and was determined to be the most effective pattern for flash reduction in a flash hider. So now we have the ability to get that maximum capacity for flash reduction in the Vortex flash hider, but also have it paired with the chemo mount capability. So if you want to jack a dead air can on the end of that thing, you get the best of both worlds. So yeah, I'd say that Occam Defense is doing a pretty good job these days as far as some innovation in the space. So if you got one of those fancy smancy guns out there that's got that pick rail on the back of it, then uh, definitely should be on your radar. And uh, Brian, if you're watching this video, which I know that you will see it, I know that these are sold separately on your website. And therefore, the demo gun is going to go back without any attachments on it.